In the lectures on Monday, we have looked at how to calculate internal forces. In this case, internal forces in a beam first. Internal forces happen when you have internal forces happen inside the beam which is on the sections when you cut through. And when you cut through a beam, a section in a beam which is a, a 2D structure, remember you have three internal forces. You have three internal forces, they are As we have seen on this slide, you can see on this slide, they are the Q, which is the axial forces, S, the shear force, and M, the bending moment. And uh, we have, we can cut, if this is part of the structure, if you can cut through, then you, when you cut through the structures, you separate, you separate it, into two parts, one on your left hand side and one on your right hand side of the sections of where you cut this. This is where you cut this and on that section you have the internal forces. And to calculate internal forces that we have seen in one example, you can use either part, you can use this part or you can use this part of the free body diagram after you cut. And um, in order to get the same answer, the same answer with the same positive or negative sign, with the same answer whether it's positive 5, you get here, you use this, you get positive 5, you, give, you use this part, you get positive 5, the same answer with the same sign, then it is very important that we use consistent We use consistent sign convention. Consistent sign convention meaning that you see that look at this diagram, the S we draw on this part is pointing downwards and this is pointing upwards and this is pointing away from the section from the left to the right here, from the right to the left, which in the in opposite direction this is counterclockwise, this is clockwise. So it is very important that this they are in proper sign conventions. So that why it is important you use is you indicate in this way on this part on the left hand side of the cut section shear force is going down and this is going up and on this side left to right right to left counterclockwise clockwise because if you don't use this then if you use this part if you use this part you might get different answer in terms of the sign positive or negative so it is very important we use the same there's the proper sign convention. So this is what we call the sign convention. On this left hand side, going down as positive for shear, counterclockwise as positive for bending moment, and on this right hand side, clockwise, positive for bending moment, going up positive for shear, from right to left, positive for axial force. This is from left to right, positive for axial force. So this is a sign convention that we are going to use and when you calculate, when you cut this, you have the freedom to choose this one to calculate this as QM or this side. In order to get the same answer, positive or negative result, depending, it doesn't matter which side you use, then this sign convention is important to follow. And we use this sign convention. Now, the, the meaning of this sign convention is what we assume is that when we use this kind of sign convention, if you cut here, Q is like this, Q, shear, going down, going up. This is counterclockwise, clockwise. There are meanings behind this. It has some meaning. It indicates what happened to that section. So, using that Q sign convention, we assume that that particular section is in tension. We assume that that particular section is in tension. If you are wrong, then you get negative, means that particular section is in compression. Positive S meaning that the left hand side is being pushed up, tends to, tends to go up, tends to slide up relative 
to the one on the right hand side under the action of the internal external forces. So that is the meaning of the positive shear force at the section that we assume. Assume the left hand side will be tends to push up relative to the right hand side. And positive moment, this is one important thing that later on we are going, we are going to make use of is positive moment that we assume, positive bending moment. Yeah, this is positive bending moment, not positive moment. It is positive bending moment. Positive bending moment that we assume here is it is going to cause the beam to bend concave upwards. Concave upwards. So if you get positive M, meaning that that particular part, the beam tends to bend upward. Or later on, the same thing for the frame, it tends to bend in this way. Meaning that if you bend in this way, then the top part, this top part of the section will be in compression, the bottom part will be in tension. Top part, compression, bottom part, tension. This part, if you bend upwards, you can feel that this part will be in top compression, the bottom part will be in tension. So this is the meaning of positive bending moment. So if you draw like this, then you get M is positive, then it means that at that section, at that particular part, the beam is going to bend concave upwards. If you get negative, opposite. That is the meaning of this sign convention. Now, I want you to pay attention to the difference between positive moment and positive bending moment. Positive moment, if you use in the equilibrium equation, you can assume positive moment to be clockwise or anti-clockwise. But positive bending moment that we assume here, it means that, it means that the beam is going to bend in this way. So that is the meaning of positive bending moment and the difference between positive bending moment and positive moment. Positive moment is up to us to decide you want positive moment to be clockwise or positive moment to be anti-clockwise. That is when you write equilibrium equations for moment. But here remember this is about bending moment. So this one it is needed later on when we want to draw a diagram uh, to indicate what happened to the beam or what happened to the frame. So this is sign conventions. So when we talk about drawing shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, axial force diagram, sign convention, which what kind of sign convention that we use is important to remember. And this is the sign convention. When you cut a section, then when you cut through a beam, for example, you separate them into two parts. The one on the left hand side, the one on the right hand side of the cut that you have done. And when you cut, you have internal forces. And the sign convention that we use is shown in this slide. Q is pointing on the left hand side, left to right. And on this on the right hand side, right to left. Shear force is pointing downwards for the one on the left hand side, upwards for the one on the right hand side. And bending moment is considered positive to be in counterclockwise direction for this part and clockwise for this part. So this is the one that we have to follow in order to get consistent results. So um, let's go through one simple example. I think this one, uh, you should be able to do this. This one to illustrate the importance of using correct sign convention. You are asked to find actual force, shear force and bending moment at this at part at point A and B, which means what happened to the what are the axial force, shear force, and bending moment on section at A and B. Okay, so this is uh, checking for statical determinacy. There is a hinge there, so separate at the hinge and hinge. You have two forces at the hinge. One, two, three, four, five. So you one, two, three, four. How you have uh, internal? You have the force one, two, three. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 unknown forces, 2 parts. Each part you have 2 equilibrium equation. 3 multiplied with 2, you get 6. So unknown forces is equal to number of equilibrium equations, so statically determinate. So this is, we check for statical determinacy. And please indicate this x and y. What is this? What is your x? What is your y? 
<coughs> then we want to calculate the actual force, uh, the internal forces, actual force, shear force, and bending moment at A and B. So when we want to calculate internal forces, you have to cut. So we cut here first. If you cut at B, you cut here at B, so you get, and you use, you use the free body diagram on the right, right hand side of the cut. If you cut through here, you get another part here, but you use the one on the right hand side. So you have internal forces. And we show the positive, uh, positive direction for shear, bending moment, and axial force according to the sign convention. So positive axial force in this direction, positive shear force in this direction, positive bending moment clockwise. On this part, the right hand side, the right part where you cut. So here we can make use of equilibrium equations to calculate what is Q, what is S, what is M. So just uh, pay attention to the sign convention for positive S, positive Q, and positive M. It follows, it follows what we have discussed earlier, the positive sign conventions. So after, after you are able to cut this, then you are ready to get the Q, S, and M. But to calculate this Q, S, and M, this is what we want. You need to know this reaction force first. You need to calculate this reaction force. You need to calculate the reaction force, EY. This is, these are the internal forces. This is reaction force. So the first step, normally, we have to calculate reaction force. So we make use of these whole structures. Separate the structure at the pin joint and then take moment equilibrium at position of hinge equal to zero. This is what we have learned. Then you can calculate EY. So the first step is normally you have to determine the reaction forces. You have to determine reaction forces EY. So this is how we get EY. And this is what we have learned in the past three weeks. Then after that EY is determined, then you can then use this free body diagram. You have three unknown forces, Q, S, and M. You have three equilibrium equations, so you can determine the Q, zero, using moment of force equilibrium equation in X direction, force equilibrium equation in Y directions, so S plus 60, S plus 60 minus 15 plus 4. This is going down, going up as positive, so you get 0. And take moment. We take moment at B here. We want to find M. So we consider our moment counterclockwise to be positive. So this bending moment is uh, clockwise, so become negative M. This is also clockwise, so negative 15 plus multiply with 4, multiply with 4 over 2 plus 60, this is counterclockwise, 60 multiplied with 4, then you get 120. So these are the actual force zero at these sections, no actual force. Shear force also zero, no shear force. Only bending moment occur, and it is positive 120. So positive, you have to know what is the meaning of positive bending moment. What happened to the beam? How does it bend? So we have to uh, relate we have to be able to relate what is the meaning of positive bending moment at that particular section, location of the beam. Now, you can also now try to get the shear force, axial force, and bending moment at A. At A, which is in the question we ask to calculate at A as well, so you have to cut through here. So you have to cut through this, separate this into two parts. Then you choose. You want to use this part here or this part. It's up, up to us to choose. We choose normally the one that there is less, less force, less load to consider. Then you can get the actual force, shear force, and bending moment at A. So the answer is actual force zero. Shear force is positive. 120, bending moment is negative 360. So try to get this by cutting, by cutting at A separate, 
the beam into two parts and then use equilibrium equations to get the Q, S and M. It's a similar step like this, but you have a different free body diagram. It is very important, I want to emphasize again, that when you cut through a section, you separate the beam into two parts or the frame into two parts. And on that particular section, whether on the left hand side or the right hand side, you must use the correct sign convention. So that you get the answer which are consistent in terms of sign. Okay. Now, what we have seen, uh, what we have seen until now is we calculate, we calculate bending moment and shear force at a particular point. In this question, you want to know what is the actual force here, what is the bending moment here, what is the actual force here and or and here, this point and this point. And uh, when we want to do design, when we want to do design, normally we are interested to know which is the maximum shear force, which is the maximum bending moment. Where does it happen? Where is the maximum shear force? Where is the maximum bending moment? So if you cut through here, cut here one, uh, 0 0.5 meter from D, cut 1 meter from D, cut at different sections, you do all the cutting here, then you will get different shear force, different bending moment and different axial force. So depending on the section where you, where you cut, generally the axial force, the shear force, the bending moment will be different. It will be different. In some cases, they will be the same, but in general, they will change. And uh, we want to know at which part, at which sections the shear force is the highest, the maximum, the bending moment is the maximum one, in order to do design. We design for that maximum one. And in order to know where is the maximum, where is the, where is the maximum shear force, maximum bending moment, we need we need to draw a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So shear force diagram and bending moment diagram will give us information about the changes in shear force, bending moment and axial force. Okay, just, this, just to refresh you how to get the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram. Okay. So, this is, uh, you are asked to draw a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for this beam. For this beam here, this is uh, pin support, this is roller support. You have one load here, 54, one load here, 135. This is 3 meter, 3 meter, and 3 meters. Right. So when you want to draw a shear force diagram, so what are the steps that you go through? What are the steps that you go through? This is, uh, I use this example to refresh. I think you have, you have come across this. You have learned this, now we try to refresh this. So, the first thing that we do is, you have to find the reaction forces. You have to find reaction forces at the support A and support B. So that is normally the first step. So, this is, you make use of what you have learned to find the reaction forces. To find the reaction forces, AX, AY and BY. So you use this free body diagram, take this equilibrium equation, you get this. Take moment at A, you get BY. And then use this equilibrium equation, you get AY. So this is normally the first steps. To get reaction forces first. So this is a, because this is a first step, so make sure you get the reaction forces correctly. If you get the reaction forces wrong, then the rest of the calculations will also be wrong. AX, AY, BY get these reaction forces. This is normally the first step. After that, after that, what do you do? You want to find shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. After that, what, what do we do? When you want to find, when you want to draw a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, we have to we have to, we have to take out pencil and, and we have to take out the ruler. We have to take out uh, graph paper. What do you do next? Cut. You have to cut. Whenever you want to uh, get internal forces, you have to cut. 
So where do you cut? Between A C. Between A. Where do you cut? Where do you cut? How many times do you have to cut? Three times. Okay, you have to cut three times. So you have to cut once between here, once between here, and once between there. So this is you have to cut. This is how we indicate cutting by this dotted line. You have to cut once anywhere between anywhere between this and this slot, between this point and this point C here. Okay. And first time we have to cut here. Sec second cut is here, and third cut is between these and these. The second cut is between this and that. Okay. And remember, I want you to remember when you cut through here, when you cut through here. You use this symbol to represent cutting the dotted line, and uh, you have to indicate uh, the location of the cut. The location of the cut. When we want to draw a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, we indicate the location of the cut using this symbol X. X can represent it can represent any any location here, any location between A and C. In this case, between C and D. In this case, between B and D. So, please remember to indicate the cut location by X, by this uh, variable X. That indicates the locations. And the other thing is, the location you have to measure from somewhere. This X is measured from A. This X is measured from A. This X is measured from B. So you have to indicate where is the location using X. At the same time, where do you measure the X from? Is it from A, from C, from D, or from B? Where? Okay, so in the diagram where you want to draw in the process, so please don't forget to put X and uh, indicate the X is measured from where. So X is measured from A. This X is measured from A also, but this X is measured from B. So this is the second step. You have to determine how many times you have to cut. Then after that, for each of the cut, for each of the cut, then you calculate the shear force, bending moment diagram, a uh, bending moment and axial force. So the first part here, you cut here. So when you cut here, then you can, you can make use of the section, the free body diagram on the left hand side of the cut. This is what we get. So X uh, reaction forces already calculated. X, don't forget to indicate X to the cut section by using X and from where. X is from A. So this, this arrow need to indicate X is measured from A until this cut section. So when you cut, remember you will have actual uh, shear force and bending moment appear. There is no actual force here because there is no load in X direction. So after that, you make use of the equilibrium equation, summation of forces in Y directions, then you get shear force. And summation of moment. Use summation of forces in y directions, you get shear force. Summation of moment at cut sections. You take moment at this here. Take moment at the cut sections, then you can find the bending moment M. In this case, 81 multiplied with X. This one is a constant value, 81. Okay. The next thing is, after you finish this, then you go to the next cut sections. Next cut, you cut this again, you use the free body diagram on the left hand side, indicate the correct positive direction of shear force and bending moment going down and counterclockwise because you use the one on the left hand side of the cut sections. So again, this equilibrium equations, you get shear force constant. Take moment at cut sections. Take moment at cut sections, then you get Bending moment in terms of an equation, 27x plus 162. So finally, the third section, the third cut here, 
The third cut, we can make use of the free body diagram on the left hand side. We can also make use of free body diagram on the right hand side. So in this case, I cut here, then I make use of this part. I don't make use of this part because this one, the calculation involves more forces. So I make use of the cut on this part. So this is the reaction forces and the positive direction now is different. Here is going down counterclockwise, here become going up clockwise because you use the free body diagram on the right hand side of the cut. So again, equilibrium equations, bending moment, moment equations, summation of forces in Y, you get S. Again, post a constant value but become negative. Take moment at the cut section here, then you get moment is equal to 108X. And finally, you draw the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram. So the shear force diagram here for different parts. You know, we make use of this. For this part, shear force is 81. Bending moment is 81X. For this part, C to D, shear force is positive 27. Bending moment is these equations. And for this part, shear force is negative 108. Bending moment is these equations. And I want you to, again, please remember your X. X is indicating where is the section. Where the section is for this part. This is the calculation for bending moment and shear force between A and C only. It is not for between C and D, not for D and B. Only for the parts of the beam between A and C. That's why we call it the portion AC. So the X, X is changing from 0 to 3 only. So that's why we have this range here. The second one, these equations, these calculations is only for shear force and bending moment between C and D. Between C and D. So the X changes from 3 to 6. X changes from 3 to 6, not 0 to 6, but 3 to 6. Because this calculation is for any section between C and D. Finally, this calculation is for any section between B and D. So the X, you start from here, so the X changes from 0 to 3. So, it is very important to take note of that thing because if not, then you will, you will draw the wrong bending moment diagram or shear force diagram. The calculation of axial force, shear force, is for which part have to be clear. Okay? This calculation is only for this part. This calculation is only between these and these. So the shear force and the bending moment equation is only for section any section between these and these and of the same thing for this part here. And the X have to be indicated correctly. The X represent this equation is for which part? So using this and this, this and this, this and this, then you can draw this. Here, constant 81, here constant 27, here constant negative 108. For bending moment diagram, starting from 0 here, going up straight line until 243. From this part, from 243, go to 324. And finally, 324 going down to 0 for this part here. So, this is the complete shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So, when you draw shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, you have to uh, indicate this diagram is shear force diagram. You have to give a name to this and the unit, you put it here or you can put directly here the unit. Here the same thing, bending moment diagram. And you have to give names to the diagram. If you don't give names, I don't know that is shear force diagram or bending moment diagram. Or I pretend, I don't know. If you don't put that, I don't know, this is your shear force diagram or this is your bending moment diagram. And please, 
indicate the unit. The unit can be put here in parentheses next to the shear force diagram or put directly in the diagram. These are the, these are the st steps involved. I think this one, the, as you have learned this, so to refresh this. So that later on when we go through more complicated example, the process is the, the process is the same. And next one, the thing that you have, we are going to, you have to know is how to draw what we call the qualitative deflected shape. Qualitative deflected shape. Deflected shape is what happened to the beam. What happened to the beam, how it bends. Yeah, how it bends when it is supported like this and there is a load acting 54 and 135. So how it is going to bend. So that is the deflected shape. And qualitative, qualitative means you don't have to calculate the value. We don't need you to know, we don't need to know the value. But the important thing is you, we want to know how the shape looks like. How the shape looks like. So that is called qualitative. And we draw this using bending moment diagram. We use this, we draw this using bending moment diagram. So remember, if the bending moment diagram is positive, if the bending moment diagram is positive, then the meaning is that at that particular section, if there is a positive bending moment, it will bend concave upwards. It's going to bend like this. If the bending moment is negative, which means negative, we are going to draw down here like a graph. This is positive. So you get, it is going to bend like this. So, qualitative deflected shape is, uh, you need, when you want to draw, you need to refer to bending moment diagram. And you need to know what is the meaning of positive bending moment, what is the meaning of negative bending moment. Positive bending moment means it will bend like this. Negative means it's going to bend in this way. So, based on this bending moment diagram and the understanding of this meaning of positive bending moment negative, so you look at this diagram. This diagram is all the way positive. These are all positive bending moment. From here, this zero, positive until 2, 4, 3, increase positive until 3, 2, 4, and decreasing positively until zero. So all of them are positive, meaning that the beam is going to bend in this way. So the whole beam is going to bend in this way. So we indicate that the deflected shape, the qualitative deflected shape is that the beam is going to bend like this. But we don't know, we, you, are, you don't have to calculate what is this value. Is it 5 mm, 6 mm, we don't have to calculate. But the important thing is that it must be indicated correctly whether it bends like this or it bends like this. Secondly, this is a support point. This is support point, this is support point. So it cannot move. It cannot move. So this point, it must be at the same location. This point must be at the same location because this is a support. So in qualitative deflected shape, look at the bending moment diagram and understand what is the meaning of positive bending moment, negative bending moment, and know which one is the support point. This is a support, this is a support. So draw the correct, draw the qualitative deflected shape. Okay. So that is one thing that you have, you have to be able to draw. And you have to get your bending moment diagram correct. If your bending moment diagram wrong, this is wrong. And also, if your bending moment is correct, if your understanding is wrong, then also the diagram will also be wrong. Okay. So that is the revisions on how you draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. And it is using the method of cut, uh, cut section methods. You cut, you cut here, here and cut, then you calculate the shear force bending moment, then you draw, and the new things that we cover here is how to draw this qualitative deflected shape. 
Well, let me emphasize using this diagram. Can I have your attention, please, class? Now, when you draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, so it is like you're drawing a graph. Okay. So this axis, this axis represent. What does it represent? This axis. Datum. What is the? What does it represent? The axis. Different points here represent different sections. Different distance. Yeah. So if here means a section, here means a section, here this means section here. So it, it is X, represent the X, your X. And this one, like drawing a graph, the vertical one is if shear force diagram is a shear force. Bending moment diagram is for the bending moment. Okay, so when we draw, if you get positive shear force, then you draw it above this line. It's like drawing graph. So when you get positive 81, so you draw above the line. If you get negative, you draw under the line. It is like you're drawing a graph. The same thing for bending moment diagram. If you get positive, then you draw it above. If you get negative, then it goes down uh, below the line. Okay. Now there is. A, I want to you to. I want you to be aware of this. There's something that I <coughs> found on the web. You have these uh, 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 tools that can help you to, to understand the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, especially how does it change? How does it change depending on the type of loading and depending on the location of loading? That is very useful for you to know how does, what is the shape of bending moment diagram and shear force diagram. And, and this is uh, website of this, this famous university, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, in the US, and you go to this website, okay. then you will get into this website. This one I, this one I upload in the e-learning so that you can get to know the website. And you specifically you choose these active statics. On this website, when you type this, and you choose this specific, there are a lot of some other tools on this website. And active static, if you click that, you go into this web page. Okay, and you can download, there are two ways you can download the thing, or you can use it online. And when you use it online, there are many things here. Uh, there are many active static, there are many things for us to learn about static, and you choose the one on beam loading. If you choose the one on beam loading, and it gives you this diagram, it gives you this page. And this page is, uh, if you play around with this, this circle here, this circle, this green one represents the reaction forces. So this represents the support. This circle here, if you move your cursor there, then you move around this means you change the location of the support. And this is a loading. This is a loading. The black one is a loading. Point load, uniformly distributed load, linearly distributed load. You can change the location of this loading by moving this yellow button. And you can change the magnitude of this up and down. If you want it to be higher or lower by moving this, this yellow button. So by moving this <coughs> simultaneously, you can see this shear force diagram and bending moment diagram changes shape. It's the same thing for this and this. Uniformly distributed load from here until here only, or you want to extend until here, so you move. Where are the loading acting? The magnitude, the same thing for this. This one, you move the support. So try to play around with this so that you get an understanding on how the shape changes. And specifically, I want you to pay attention that in point load, between two point load, your shear force is constant. The bending moment diagram is straight line. Okay. Whenever there is a uniformly distributed load, your shear force diagram is not constant anymore, but straight line. And your bending moment diagram will be curved. This is parabolic. When there's a linearly distributed, the shear force diagram is not straight anymore, it is curved. This is parabolic. 
And the bending moment diagram also is not curved anymore. It becomes cubic. So this is changing from straight line to constant to straight line to curve. This is changing from straight line to parabolic to cubic. So this is very important for you to develop the understanding. So when you draw your shear force diagram or you check shear force diagram, so if there is only a point load, if there is only a point load, you cannot have shear force diagram like this. When you have distributed load, then your shear force diagram must be a straight line, not constant. And the other thing is, this is what we will emphasize also in the lectures, whenever there is a point load, there is a jump, there is a sudden jump in the shear force diagram. Here, at this location, it jumps down. You try moving this, this jumping will move. The same thing here, it will jump down. So, these are the necessary important characteristics of a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. And I want you to play ar around with this, okay? And try to get an understanding feeling of when you change the support, what happened? When you change the load, what happened? When you change this, this, if you move this, then the distributed load will cover more area. What happened? Pay attention to, this will change instantly. When you move this, this will change instantly. Okay. So this is a very useful tool for you to get an understanding of this, how the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram change. Now, once we have seen the example how you, how you get shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, so it doesn't matter uh, how does the problem look like the loading become more complicated, then the process is the same. The process is the same. So I want you to have a look at this before you come to the class. Before you come to the class, next time I meet you again, the process involved in solving, in getting the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram of this. So the first thing is, of course, we try to check statical determinacy. We make sure this is statically determinate. The next one is you have to determine the reaction forces. Get the reaction forces. This is normally the first steps. And remember to get, this is the first steps. If you don't get the reaction forces correctly, then the rest of the calculation will be wrong. Then when the calculation is wrong, then you know I also give mark wrongly. I cannot control myself with the calculation wrong. Automatically the, 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 the hand you cannot give correct mark. You will give wrong mark. Next, you have to decide how many cuts you have to make. This is four, correct. One between here, one between here, and then one between this and this, and one between this and that. Four times. Then, for each of the cut, you do it one by one. Get the free body diagram, get the shear force, and get the bending moment. For this part, for this part, between here and between there. So, one by one, we calculate. Next one, you go to this. Finally, you go to... Then, draw the bending moment diagram, a shear force diagram, and the bending moment diagram. So, those are the steps involved. Okay? So, before you come to the class, please go through this. Okay? And the most important thing is, you have, you have gone through this. One thing is, you have to be aware of how many cut sections you have to make. And in uh, most cases, in most cases, 
I think many times you are able to get the equation correctly, but when you come to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, drawing the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, you must draw it correctly based on the, e the equation that you have calculated. If you get it correctly, the shear force calculation, but you draw wrongly, then also it is not correct because you are able to get the shear force bending moment, but finally the question asks you to draw a shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, it is wrong. Okay. So remember how to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram.